Welcome to the channel. I'm Tony the Technician and today we're going to be looking at Hawk's Sinister Harness Bar. So if you guys follow along with the channel, more specifically the 3rd gen Camaro build, you guys know that the Camaro is down again right now because the fuel pump decided to take a dump and I have 150 miles roughly on the car so we got the the rear end out, the old tank, all that out of the car. Sorry the garage is a mess right now. And I just went ahead and ordered a new fuel pump sending unit tank and straps that we're going to be installing. But I figured while it's out, I need to go ahead and get this in because it's going to be a lot easier with everything out. I don't have to worry about drilling into the fuel tank. So I'll be showing you guys how to install this in this video. But I'll go over why I went with this as well once we go over to the car. But if you guys have a third gen, you guys may know that as far as purpose made harness bars for the third gens you only have a couple of options you can go a universal route if you can modify it to make it work for your needs but as far as vehicle specific ones i believe there's only two unless you have a roll cage or you can adapt one yourself so as far as harness bars they have one that is made for an 88 to 92 camaro which uses mounting locations in the 88 to 92 they have the over the shoulder seat belt you remove those retractors and the harness bar actually mounts right there and then it mounts down by the seatbelt brackets. I have an 85 so that's not going to work for my situation. And then Hawk's Sinister Harness Bar, it uses the mounting locations for the rear seat strikers. So it works for 85 to 92 and then 82 to 84. Uh, you have to call Hawks and, and there's maybe a special panel or something that they're going to send you with it in order to make sure that everything works for your needs. But you still have to be aware of something with these. In the third gen Camaros, you have two different seat designs for the rear seats and you're going to have a split back where it's split right down the middle and you can fold down each side individually. Or you're going to have the single back where it's one panel along the back seat and with those, you're only gonna have one striker pin. And that's going to be on the passenger side. If you have the split back rear seat, you're going to have a striker pin on both sides. And you basically just remove those striker pins and you bolt this in on both sides. Well, luckily enough, my Camaro had the single back seat. So even this option isn't a direct bolt in, but I called Hawks and they were kind enough to actually offer the mounting brackets that hold the striker pins in the split backs so I need one for the driver's side so well they sent both and we'll just be taking this one to the shop and having it welded in this just kind of goes on the wheel well and uh, they'll just kind of tack it in place and then you got this right here which will actually become the new mount so I will give Hawks one thing they have done a good job on this as far as the coating, the welding, the material, everything is very good quality. Uh, the hardware included. The packaging was done very well. Also, a lot of packing paper. They had it saran wrapped and then wrapped in the, the styrofoam. And then also wrapped in a lot of paper inside of this box. So that's very well protected. And then the hardware was also wrapped and packaged individually and uh, same thing with the mounting brackets so if you guys are looking for a harness bar and you guys only have a single striker keep in mind that Hawks will uh, do this for you I believe it was $75 for the two to be thrown in with this and I believe right now as of 2023 the price on this harness bar is I want to say 389 somewhere around there so not cheap but uh, you know, it's worth it, especially for my situation. So before we take a closer look at this, let me go ahead and show you why I went with this. So I'm going to be installing new seats and harnesses and brackets and everything, but with these, when I originally redid the interior, I don't have a roll cage and I didn't have anywhere to mount these four point harnesses. So they are actually bolted to the seat bracket underneath the seat. Well, Honestly, that, that's a very unsafe way to do it, and it shouldn't be done this way. Uh, the harnesses shouldn't be at more of a 45-degree angle from where they're going over your shoulders, so this is definitely not the suggested way to do it. And I figured while everything's out, this is the time to make it right. So that's why I'm doing this, 
Uh, but stay tuned. I will have another video where we install new seats and harnesses and brackets and all of that. But I want to get this done while the tank is out. You guys see right over here, right here, is where the passenger side striker is mounted. And on the driver's side, I do not have one. So we'll be cutting away that insulation over there. And I'll take it to the shop and have my buddy weld it up. The important part is the two bars on the back here actually get bolted through the floor with this hardware here right above where the fuel tank sits and I figure while the fuel tank is out that's the safest and easiest way to get this thing bolted in you'll just have to remove these strikers which is fairly simple I've already put some WD on mine the other day but you can see it's just a Torx in order to remove that so here is the harness bar itself this is going to go to the back of the car this is where it's going to bolt through the floor and then this middle bar here is what is going to bolt into the striker plates on the sides. And then this bar comes up where your back seats would normally be. And this is where your harnesses are going to attach. Keep in mind that you will not be able to have your rear seats up when using this or a harness bar. So just keep that in mind. The tubing, I took some measurements if I remember correctly. Uh, it's like 1.6 inch tubing. For the main bars, obviously keep in mind that they're powder coated, so they may be a little bit thinner. These are three quarter inch tubing here. Uh, I want to say it's three sixteenths inch steel plates here and on the end, if I remember correctly. So it's built pretty beefy and I'll tell you one thing, the welds look good and the overall powder coating looks fantastic. And it, like I said, it was protected very well. These are like little billet aluminum spacers. These are going to go on the end, I believe. And uh, then the these are the bolts that you'll use to pass through into the mounting plates on the sides of the car. And then these nuts are included with the hardware. And if you can see, there's some knurling on there that's gonna go up into the sheet metal, I believe, uh, in order to keep that nut kind of in place. I will not be using these, I actually, got this set a little while back that I want to use and I'm going to put a threaded cert through the floor because these are M8 hardware. I'll be doing a dedicated video on this. This is the Doyle 10 inch rivet nut setter kit from Harbor Freight and I'll just throw that down there and we're going to be using these and then I'll just use a little bit of blue Loctite on the fasteners to make sure that they don't back out. But uh, we'll see how this does. I think it's going to work really well. Uh, over here is going to be a T50. And basically how this is going to work is you're going to align this portion up here with the spacer in here. You're going to align it over here. And also keep in mind that these do, if I can get my hand out of the light, these do move the threaded portion. They're just kind of sitting back there. So it may be a pain to line up. If you got like some tape that you can kind of hold it in place, that may make it a little bit easier. But I'm going to go ahead and do that now. We'll just get this, we'll just go ahead and get this side bolted up over here. And then I'll make sure to get it straight across so we can figure out where we need to drill the holes for this. We just need to be careful because that bracket obviously is not over there. So I need to make sure that this unit is straight before I go drilling any holes. I think I basically have this thing where it needs to be. We've just put the spacer in right here and then just kind of snug this guy up here. It's not super tight or anything. A good way that helped me align it, since I don't have that bracket on the other side, you can see I cut the insulation out there, but uh, I bolted this in and then I look and this is actually a little cup area for where the coilover is mounted at. And this side plate basically rests right at the lip of that cup. And I'm using a little 2x4 and a little rubber bushing to get my spacing right. Otherwise, these uh, don't really touch the floor. This is what keeps, these are what keep the harness bar from moving up and down. So that's what this is. And then this is obviously to be the safety from it going forward and back. So now that we have kind of that leveled out, I lined up, if you follow the hole where it bolts through at, it sits right in front of this body line where the two panels meet. It sits just slightly in front of that. And then same thing goes on this side. That bolt lines up 
just a hair in front of that line right there. And uh, then I just made sure to line this bracket up with the edge of this cup. And this side has some insulation over the coilover threads. Uh, so that should be exactly where it's at. And then I'm just double checking to make sure that this is straight across the vehicle. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mark our holes. I'm gonna cut out uh, basically this. I don't know if I'm gonna cut out the shape or if I'm just gonna cut out kind of like a square in here. And uh, I'll figure it out, but it's gotta go through quite a bit of material. So, and this stuff sucks to cut. So we'll go ahead and uh, get it marked up and start preparing to drill a hole. Now I've got the hole, I'm going to peel back this NASA insulation. Then we'll take our threaded cert, thread it down with the flange down. Put it through, and now you're just going to simply crimp. And then sometimes they'll get stuck on there, you just simply rotate the tool. And then this threaded portion up here, you simply turn. One thing you always want to check though when using these is that they're actually holding their position. You don't want them to turn because then it kind of defeats the purpose. So we'll take our hardware and that cert is nice and solid. No spinning, it doesn't wiggle and uh, now we can get this thing bolted up. Basically what I've done is I've reinstalled it temporarily and I left these bolts sticking up some so I could locate them in the carpet since it's got this thick insulation on it. Located it, cut a hole in the carpet, removed some of the insulation on both sides and so now we should be able to, hopefully I don't have to remove the entire area where the plate is. Hopefully that's good enough to just get the bolt through and we'll go ahead and get this carpet laid back down. The only thing we're not going to be able to do is get that bracket on right now and reinstall the trim pieces. So, other than that, it'll be in here in just a second for you guys. So that's it as far as the install. Uh, don't mind the mess. I haven't put everything back together. The harness harnesses from the bottom of the seat will just get bolted in here. I'm not going to do that until I get it welded in over there and get the interior put back in. Keep in mind when you guys are doing this, if you guys are going to go this route, that you need to put the, the two side plastic pieces in uh, because they have a hole located on them that that spacer is going to sit in. Uh, I have mine off because of that and then some other things I was doing, so I'm going to go ahead and get this side put back on, but uh, I have to leave that side off so they can weld in the bracket, but other than that, some other information, the fasteners back here are going to be a, a 5 millimeter Allen for this fastener in the rear, and then the bolt that passes through over here is going to be a 15 millimeter, and the approximate weight of this Hawk's harness bar is going to be around 20 pounds. I tried to scale it and it floated between 19 and a half and 20. So it's somewhere right around there. So I think it turned out really nicely and those uh, threaded certs really came in handy. I think it's gonna be great instead of having just a little nut down there. And I'm really glad I took the fuel tank out to do so. Well, I didn't take it out to do this, but <laughs> it was a good time to do so. So I hope you guys got some good information out of this video. If you guys did, please make sure to smash that thumbs up. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, feel free to drop a comment down below. I try to respond to everybody. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.